But you know what did fit? And there is several takes of this sitting in a computer in Studiopolis. However, some of us are just built different. <laughs> We're so close to greatness. Yeah, we, you know what would have been ready throughout heaven and earth that uh, we, we didn't end up using? From the ground to the sky, I am that guy. It would have been, it would have been the flaps perfect, but no, we stuck with the original. <laughs>
that's really neat. That's not every show. So it, it is really, it, it, was, it was very nice that our director was so open to it. And she, she really understood, it's like, hey, there are some sacred lines, right, in this show that should not be changed, right? Like, they tried to change you crying, they tried to change throughout Heaven and Earth, right? Um, they did, yeah, yeah. So, it, so mainly the problem comes from, like, when you translate Japanese into English, sometimes it does not fit the original lip lab anymore, right? So throughout Heaven and Earth, the English translation of it was going to be half the length of what it was supposed to be, right? So we had to like surgically alter it to get the entire throughout heaven and earth thing in there. Like technical challenges like that. Same with uh, when Gojo gets put into the prison realm, it's good nights after the Gojo Lotus meeting and in the new world, you know, it's in the body. But it was written so differently, it was like, good night, I'll see you again sometime or something. And I was like, no. See you, bro. I was like, no, I just I've been reading this this week. No. So we made it work. I was like a little bit hurt. Um, so the line, we are the exception, we had to change because it just didn't fit. But you know what did fit? And there is several takes of this sitting in a computer in Studio Apples. However, some of us are just built different. <laughs> We're so close to greatness. Yeah, we, you, you know what would have been written throughout heaven and earth that uh, we, we didn't end up using? From the ground to the sky, I am that guy. It would have been, it would have been the flaps perfect, but no, we stuck with the original. All right, now, was there a favorite scene that you guys have in particular? It doesn't have to be your own scene, but a scene from that season that just, you know, tugs your heartstrings or even makes you smile. Oh. Yeah, um, every time Yuji was whooping Mahito's ass, every single time, every single time that he was catching those hands, I was on my feet, and went, get his ass, Yuji, get his ass! It's okay. That whole Yuji Choso episode was just so, like, incredible, immaculate. Like, the, the direction, the cinematography of it, it's just the color, oh, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Yeah, uh, so your line where you got to call Mahito a little, little bitch, bitch was the yeah. most cathartic. Uh, thank KG10, because he DM'd me, he's like, you know what? You should definitely say, call him a little bitch. And I was like, okay, I'll ask okay. Christy. So, so I saw the episode that came out in Japanese, right? And I, I, I DM'd uh, Anne, and I was like, how much can I pay you to call Mahito? And I was like, nothing. That would be free. Well, like, I went into the studio and I was like, Christy. Don't be mad, but I have a suggestion. It is not like, though this is not what's in the manga, but I feel like this carries the spirit of it. And I did it, and she was like, oh, Dan, I really like that. <laughs> and I was like, can we put that, can we put that in, the, in the top spot? Like, let that be the slut. And she's like, okay, it'll be the slut, but we have to put the real, like, the real translation, which was something more generic, like, yeah, for being a coward and running away, which is boring. Uh, she, like, had to go in the, in the, in the bin, too, to go to Crunchy Roll. And crunchy room, but it's live. And I was like, that and like I also like he's not here, but uh, we gotta give Adam his props. Like what his breakdown oh, was oh. so heartbreaking, yeah. man. Like I had to hear that while I was recording, and I was like, oh shit. This right. is he really had a lot to do this season, and like I feel like he really rose to that challenge emotionally. Like that was that's hard. I think also when I was recording the scene where Gato was talking to the Star Religious group, and he had the mic, he's like, "Is this on?" And then he's like, "From now on, you'll obey me." Basically, you know, he's like, "I'm going to rename the group." And, and, any uh, any objections? And people are kind of clamoring in the background. And he goes, "Well, that just won't do." I love that line. It's just like, so so laid back. Like I'm about to cause some serious shit right now. You know? <laughs> And then, you know, then, then he like blows the guy up on stage and then he like wipes some blood off and he's like, white drop. That's and it's like, damn monkeys. I really love, I really love how that first arc really showed us in real time, like, Gato's like, descent into madness. Like, when you read it, you're just like, oh, oh yeah, he like gets this and blah, blah, blah. But to see it play out, like, the way it's adapted, I love this. Awesome. That was amazing. Yeah. At that one point, he's like just leaning in the shower, yes. distressed, just like, oh no. It's so good. I totally cried a bunch of times. Maybe that makes me weak. But I, I, I cried so often watching this show. Like, Jujutsu cries in. I think it's <laughs> 
then, and then they released the nominee episode on Thanksgiving? <laughs> what the hell? Who does that? So What were we supposed to be thankful for that day? Nothing. So, we did touch up on a little bit about lines. So, was there a particular line that you guys, like, just, it's your go-to, it's your favorite line that you ever had to record for Jujutsu Kaisen? And it does, it could be any season. <laughs> so, the, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, you think you'd be the Ukraine right? one, right? But it's not. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> So, in fact, when we had the Jujutsu Rolls in season one, uh, the one where they were stopping Nagami from talking to a girl, right? Uh, <laughs> did you not touch him so casually, you whole wreckers? <laughs> so good. A whole scene. Uh, yeah, the first day I went in to do um, Toto, they didn't tell me anything about him, right? And so we're sent the voice, and I'm just like, okay, it's a big time. So does this guy have like a deal? And our director's like, oh, you'll see, buddy. Don't worry, don't worry, buddy. And like the fourth line down, I read it, I'm like, there's no way that's actually the line. And it was, me, I like a tall woman with a big, beautiful ass. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's a philosopher. Oh. that whole speech she gives to Momo, but in particular, uh, it's the, um, I love myself when I'm pretty and all dressed up, and I love myself when I'm kicking ass! I thought at the end of the movie when it's Gojo and Gato and they're just sitting there, and he just leans over and says, the least you could do is hit me with some curses. Aww. And I was like, huh? Oh. Then everybody knows what Gojo said to him. Nobody knows, I'm sorry, nobody knows what Gojo said. But it was probably along the lines of, you'll always be my best friend, I love you so much, something like that. But then he kills him. I'm sorry, spoiler. Well, that could have been in the plot. No, you know, I had to shorten that a little bit. Uh, I, I like the, the line, and it's one of the reasons why I, I, I like the anonymity because it's so real, and it's, uh, it's the line where he's saying, it's not a crime to be a child, then there's another line where he says it's, it's the accumulation of life's little despairs that makes a person an adult. So we're getting rid of your favorite bread, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, this is, this is going to be for the, obviously, the Ghetto and Gojo shippers. So we know they're out there. What's that? What, you <laughs> what a ship. Yeah, what a ship. You know, you get on a, we'll, you get we'll on a ship, you it. sail together, far away, we'll sail, into the sunset, yeah. holding hands. So, how do you two feel about KFC? I literally have not eaten there since, to be honest. Like, I have not had a single... I don't know if anyone's noticed, but I'm doing some KFC earrings today. <laughs> how dare you! <laughs> I just wanted to honor the world's saddest breakup. Look at that. Trauma. I love that line too in the front there, where it's like, if you're gonna kill me, then go ahead and kill me. At least there'd be a reason for it. That was pretty too. I bet, I bet those sessions and the sessions when you guys look at each other in the eyes when you say those lines, right? Uh, eye contact. I mean, FaceTime. Yeah, it's just say, literally pretty together at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the, the, the thing I really, really admire about the, these two characters, right? It's you can read them so many different ways, even if you just view them as the best of friends, right? It is so poignantly obvious that they are the most important people in each other's lives, right? And beyond that, it almost doesn't matter. You know, they are there one way or another, you know, kindred spirits, soulmates. They're, they're the most important people to each other. And really, as long as we stay true to that, it, it all falls into place. Agreed. Long way. And the beauty of JJK, which we all see, obviously, like how things can go wrong, right? No one is safe, right? So obviously, we did have a few losses in the Shibuya arc, and are there any ones in particular, whether they're confirmed or not, that just again, like it's it'll make you cry, yep. it'll make you sob. <coughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
You know, I was really sad Tochi went out again, man. I mean, like, <laughs> he seemed like he was on the ups, you know? Yeah. What a nice guy. guy. I'm willing to spook you, man. That, that, that was a great Don't worry about it. He's, he's a dummy thing. The clap of his ass cheeks and whatever. So it's nice his hands. It never dies, baby. It's a very different book. You would get <laughs> I really hope there is like a training arc and he just comes in and that's what he can do. <laughs> I've learned how to flex them so hard. Somebody, if that ends up taking out Sugrina, I will be so I will forget oh. Gay for everything. I will like I will personally send him an apology letter, be like, I'm sorry I doubted you, my friend. <laughs> Now, this question is for Anne. Uh, so, as we all know, you play this badass character, Nobara. How do you, like, do you see yourself in Nobara? Are there aspects that you guys share or that you feel like she's basically like a kindred spirit or she's like, oh, what is she to you? Oh, 100%. I feel like one, like, when I was auditioning for her and I was watching the sub and I realized, oh, she's. She's so cool, she's got a cool vibe, I like that. And as I got deeper into this character, like going through it, I just, I love the way she expresses herself. I, I vibe with that. I want to be like that, you know? I feel the things that she stands for are so aspirational um, that I, it's, that's what I want to be when I grow up, you know? I also just love the way she hangs with her friends. That's the way I hang with my friends. We are always like ribbing each other. We are we are constantly making fun of each other, undercutting each other left and right. Uh, but that's that that I totally understood. I was like, oh, I understand those relationships a hundred percent. Yeah, I just I love her. Woo! And for you guys as well, are there any like little quirks or any personality traits that you feel you've kind of adapted ever since taking on the roles of the characters? <laughs> We're all looking at you, I don't? sure do like rice balls now. <laughs> my, my, my wife claims that I'm trolly like. Uh, Joe Joe, but I think that's character assassination. I don't know. I don't know. Man. I think that's a perfect. <laughs> My characters tend to have like a, a master plan, like all of them have some kind of long-term plan. I don't, I don't have that so much. <laughs> I'd like to develop more of that. Yeah, I think that I've really developed a dislike of working. <laughs> oh, no. That's, couldn't be more true. You know what I wish I could uh, obtain from Gojo Trait that I'm good? Like, he's rich. Yeah. You know, I think that's such a nice trait, and I wish, you know, I got to see what you've done for Gojo. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have reached the last 15 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and ask the audience what they have any questions that they want to ask in particular to these amazing voice actors. So I'll have everyone line up in the middle. And hopefully we have an extra mic unless I gotta go down there. Oh, oh. We got it. What if we just had this ring at us? We got one more cast member who's showing up. Toji! Is that me? Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry. Pardon me, guys. I, they just paid me 300 mil to go shoot Rico. What I told you we could do is show up late. So, sadly, I'm Fuck so you. sorry. Everyone probably has to sit back down since now we have. But it's okay. It's just okay. stay there. Stay there for a second. You have to sit down. Go ahead. We'll, we'll be doing it hopefully in 10 more minutes. So, we'll get a few questions in. So, if you guys want to sit down or you can stay, oh, it's up to you. Since you are late, you get the honor of introducing yourself. Carpet stuffy, carpet stuffy. Yeah, guys, my name is Nicholas Roy. Again, apologies for being tardy. Uh, I'm Toji Fushiguro. Thank you. And what's up, your name? Shout out to you. Now, you missed out on all the juicy questions. 
Shucks. Yeah. You, you also missed out on uh, some KFC. We did. We got to eat some. Uh, who brought KFC? <laughs> you know, I would, I would say, I would say oh, Ann did, KFC. and you know, we had a, we had a little breakup happen too. It was kind of really sad. Oh, right on. A breakup? Right on. Right on. <laughs> that usually happens with Gaza and Chuya. <laughs> <laughs> Turn this into a Mungo Street on panel really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For another time. Do you have a favorite line? Of your character? Do you have a favorite line that you did by chance? Uh, from Toji? Um, got yeah, so many good ones. Uh, hey kid, what's your name? You mean your last name is not Zen? That makes me glad. Father of the Year. Father's Day. Even a monkey like me can be this one. Now, since you're here, was there any any particular scene with Toji that you felt was a little bit difficult to try and like emulate, or was it like maybe too emotional for you? Obviously, your favorite line was a scene with him and Megumi, so. Um, nothing that was too difficult, um, to be completely honest. Um, that was my favorite scene, because uh, I was actually looking forward to that scene. Um, ahead of time, I was. I didn't know. I didn't read ahead, so I didn't know how that was going to play out when they actually met face to face. Um, but uh, I like how concise and to the point and simple that scene was. Um, being like really weirdly beautiful at the same time, um, it had all those elements that made like a really good scene out of just very minimal dialogue. So uh, that was probably my favorite scene. So, if you were able to voice any Jujutsu Kaisen character, anybody, they could be minor or they could be one of the main cast, who would it be? And we can also go down the line or whoever wants to start. Uh, Gojo. <laughs> or Panda. Okay. That's my answer. It's gotta be Nanami. It's gotta be A man, Nanami. Not the main. <laughs> no, no, not or Toji. Toji was, I really enjoyed that character too. I spent enough time developing and, uh, and uh, oh, sorry, I can't say the words. Uh, an, an impression of, uh, oh god, why am I spacing on a name? Our director from season one. Uh, Sorich, yeah. So I kind of wanted to do Jogo just to like, just to have a reason to finally break that out. <laughs> um. Actually, I would, I would voice Maki. Oh, I would voice Maki. In, in another world. In another world. For me, Rico. I feel like Karma would give me Rico, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alrighty, and Toji, what would you say? When it comes to Jujutsu Kaisen, obviously you guys are all like a family, and all the characters have special relationships with each other. Um, is there a particular relationship that you guys just cherish forever, whether it's canon or not as well? So, it could be a friendship, or it could be... Um, yeah, like, like I said, the Dezo go through relationship is really, really important, and um, it's probably my favorite like interaction between two characters in JJK. Um, Beyond that, I think I think the stuff between Nanami and Yuji is really, really nice. You know, the father-son relationship that they have is really, really sweet. Woo! I agree with that. Uh, I really, really enjoyed in uh, movies to the, the memory and Zero. Um, when we were uh, talking about it afterwards, me, Matt, and Allegra, kind of all realized we'd come to the same conclusion about our characters, which is that this is the class that when we meet them in the show, they are over Gojo shit. And they just, they have that last little bit of optimism in the movie. Um, and I, I loved that. Uh, and then obviously, it's like, you know, my brother, your Jiu Jitsu Dory. Like, I, I can't, it's, he's great. I love it. I love the dynamic between Yuji Megumi and Nobara because they're thick as thieves, you know? Like, they start off and, like, they don't like each other the first time she sees them, which is like, who are these fools? But by the end of the season, you know, you know that they, they would die for each other, you know? And also to that point, I feel like one of the strengths of the anime is that it really shows all of the kids as kids. 
I love that. Like they are just dumb kids. <laughs> uh, and when the, in the very few few little bits that you get to see them as children, like that's it's so lovely. And those little nuggets, I, I will hold on to them. They saw human birth were born for Yuji, you know? Yeah. Like that's that's yeah. friendship. That's, that's friendship. True friendship. Uh, how how could I not say um, Toji and Megami? Although it was a one way street there, where Toji finished. Uh, but I'd love to see, and I don't read ahead, and I don't know if you guys already know. I don't know what you know Megami thinks of of Toji uh, at some point. I'd love to hear, find out, see if he ever does find out, and uh, that that indeed was his, his father, and like what his you know what he feels about that. Um, I'm curious to find out. And now we're going to talk about, you know, something that's a little sour, Kenjaku. So we all know how Kenjaku basically is showing us, like again, and everyone here is alive and they can just, poof, disappear. So if you guys were in a room with Kenjaku and you were able to do whatever you wanted, and let's just say, let's just say, he can't do anything bad, what would you do to him? Just like, what, what weapon would you use? Would you hug him maybe? Maybe he needs some love? I would wonder when he's finally going to defeat those pesky Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to look at Ken Zuck the same way again. First of all, I would leave a room. I would like, it's a, that's a terrible place to be. Don't leave care. a room with my job. I, I don't care if he's tied up. I don't care if he's like, I, I don't want his brain hopping out. Like, I, no thank you. I just, I simply walk around and leave. That's what I would do. Yeah. So you wouldn't beat him to a pulp? Or put him in a box? No. No. I would get out of there. I'm like, I'm just this dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> And show him a funny meme and leave. <laughs> All right, so now we're at the last five minutes, so we can hopefully get a few questions in. We're gonna, we're so lightning, we'll play lightning round. Lightning round. I love how you guys have just been like lounging. It's really cute. Okay, I'll go down this time. It's okay. I'm, I'm oh, getting there. <laughs> no, don't worry. I have Gojo over here. He'll save me. Love what? <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so you're gonna state your name and then whatever question you want. Hi, uh, my name's Ron. Um, so the question I was to ask is, you know, ba based on like how this past season has ended, you know, uh, I'm just kind of curious, you know, like have y'all reached out to Mappa just on like the new season coming up because uh, just on everything that went down, I'm pretty sure we all want season three to be here as soon as possible because I'm right, you know. I'm already read the manga, you know, like after Shibuya, and there's some crazy stuff. There's still the unanswered, but I mean, we all want season three to get here, right? So. Oh, honey, that's really cute that you think we got a direct line to Mappa. I, mean, I, I tried reaching out to Mappa to talk to Safe Not to me. Do you guys? Work. <laughs> Mr. Mappa's. Phone number? Yeah, Mr. Mappa. Yeah, Mr. Mappa. I text him all the time. Yeah. They, they refuse to reanimate the scene where Nagami just flies to Malaysia. Yeah. So I, I, I gave up right there. And then comes back refreshed. <laughs> That's how it was supposed to go, but it yeah. uh, didn't happen, so. Too bad. We, we don't have any poll, unfortunately. So. Yeah, <laughs> no poll at all. <laughs> we all want the season to start as soon yeah. as possible. We're all excited for that. My name is Dana. My question is, if you had your character's first technique, or in Toji's case, his heavenly restriction for one day, what would you do? Woo! First technique, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, man. Okay, this is going to sound like a really stupid answer, and I, but I would totally do this for at least half a day, right? My favorite animal is like bears, right? But I'm also terrified of bears, right? I, I like one of my worst fears is to get eaten by a bear, but one of my greatest wishes is to hug a bear. <laughs> I would go to the zoo and hug several bears. <laughs> How are they not friends? Friendship. Yeah. I don't know, build houses? I don't know, man. <laughs> How's the homeless? Yeah. 
Oh boy. I don't know, man. I'd gather up a bunch of criminals and I would max them up who's mocking their asses. <laughs> I would open a rice ball restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Feed the poor. Aww. You say you're going to feed the poor. You say you do that by cutting them a camera. Is that a dimmy panel? Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Sam. Uh, I had a question for one person, but I'm going to just give it to the whole group. Um, any other fictional character, they are not in Jujutsu Kaisen. We're excluding the whole Jujutsu Kaisen cast. Your character, any other character in fictional media, who would be their best friend? Dasai from Among Us Jerry Lines. The dojo, they would have the most epic TikTok channel in the history. <laughs> Man, that's a tough one. Yeah, it's too many fictional characters to go with. Yeah, I told you it's not. It would have to be like maybe Hamill that doesn't speak. I'd say Mickey Mouse, probably. I like Garfield. Ken Jocko and Mickey Mouse walking around together. I think I like Gato and Alf would get along. Yeah, I think that'd be good. I suddenly had in my mind the most beautiful spin off Jager King and the Muppets, like Jager King and the Muppets. That'd be incredible. Right? That is so good. Um, later, Gojo. <laughs> Hello. Speaking of ships, um, imagine your character had to build a ship out of cardboard. What would it look like and would it uh, sink or uh, float in a lake? Characters like to build a ship out of cardboard. Sure. What would it look like and would it sink? Mine would absolutely sink uh, in the ocean, a cardboard ship. Yeah, yeah. yeah it would probably go down. I think logically, cardboard's gonna get really soaked. Real fast. Maybe go to the only one because of the humidity? <laughs> I, I wouldn't get into anything Gojo built for me. No. <laughs> I feel like I know he's supposed to be good at everything, but would you get into a, a cardboard boat that man built for you? No. Okay. <laughs> I feel like for a lot of us, it's like, yeah, like if all of the kids got together, they'd have one brain cell, you know? Like, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if I trust that. They would look real fun. You and then they put it in the water and just go. I would get into Nami's boat. I would probably get into Nami's boat with us, you know what I mean? You would make it waterproof. See where you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You figure it out. Yeah, you would have the Twitter, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Paige. Um, um, I was just wondering if you could put your character into another world, what world it, would it be? It could be anime, non-anime, whatever you think, and what would be the first thing you do? Food wars. Food wars. I would, I would watch, I would watch Gojo participate in a ship with Yankee, 100%. Alf. <laughs> Alf. 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 I want over to go be an idol. She can be one of those idol animes. Yeah. Survivor. <laughs> Maybe like Call of Duty. <laughs> so we're gonna put the Tono in the 90 Day Fiance. You have to give me a lot of money. Give me a lot of money. Yeah, I think Daddy would be pretty good on The Bachelor. Yeah! A really good show for him. Hi, in your head, Cannon. Uh, what was the first thing Gojo and Gato bonded over? How did they restart their friendship? Um, I've actually thought about this a lot for some reason. <laughs> so, in my head, right, um, because they, they they probably had nights where they, they had like movie watching things, right? And, and Gojo canonically loves Digimon, right? And, and I'm guessing Gato has a finer taste in film. I just have a feeling, right? Probably. Yeah, so Gato would be like, hey, could you just bring over something watchable, right? And then Gojo brings over like three seasons of some Digimon. <laughs> and that'll be the end of Beautiful Friendship. Wait, did I ever show you the Digimon tattoo? Oh, Digimon tattoo. Oh, that's crazy. I had, uh, I had to text yeah. Ben and be like, you live on my skin now. Yeah. All right, so this is going to be our last question. So sorry. Oh. So make it count. If you have more questions, come down to our tables downstairs. Come see us, you know, we'd love to see you. Sorry. 
Well, he's popular. That's uh, not his that's, fault. That's not his There's fault. There's an up and flow. Sometimes it's shorter lines, sometimes longer lines, except for in kitchen. Um, you, what's your question? Hi, I'm Pam. Um, it's so crazy that you mentioned the Muppets. I've been thinking about this every day of my life. Um, if Jujutsu Kaisen did a Muppets film, what Muppet would your character be? <laughs> Miss Piggy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yes. Hanzo, probably. Hundred <laughs> percent. Animal dance. Animal. <laughs> I can see that. Oh boy. I feel like Inumaki would be would be. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Beaker, Beaker, Beaker. And then Toto would probably be. Oh god. What's his name? You know the guy in the Muppet movie who's like. You guys left without me! Sweetums! Yes! Yeah. Yeah. yeah! I feel like that would be him. Yeah. Would Nanami be? Nanami would be like a one human character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nanami would be Orson Welles' cameo in the Muppet movie. I can't remember the guy's name, but he has a puffy hair on the top and wears glasses. Oh. Either that or maybe a Oh, uh, Professor Honeyman? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, 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 the evil guy! The evil guy! Yeah. 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 Oh! We got it. Jim Henson, Cock Lantus? Yes. We're ready for the Tangent Muppet Special. Pinkie Pies? All right. Yeah, that was a good last question. I love you, that was my favorite. Yeah. So many good cosplays out there. Amazing. I want to take a picture of all of the cosplayers one by one, so come by my booth. I'll put you all on my Instagram. I'm serious. <laughs> Well, I would like to thank you guys so much for participating in this panel. You guys were amazing. And you guys were amazing. Thank you guys yes. so much. Can we give a round of applause for amazing? Thank you for watching Anime Diet. Be sure to smash that like and subscribe button for more tasty treats.